Torres. I work at the Institute for Policy Studies here in Washington. I have worked uh, 15 years or so on free trade agreements since I lived in Mexico and from Mexico and I used to work for the Mexican Action Network of Free Trade for many, many years. And I witnessed, uh, I have witnessed very closely the disaster that NAFTA has been for the majority of Mexicans, the 99% of Mexicans, while it has helped to enrich the 1% of Mexicans. After NAFTA, I continued working on the Central American Free Trade Agreement. I worked for several years with uh, an organization of some international uh, over there in Central America uh, with Central American partners, uh, making it very clear from the experience from NAFTA that CAFTA would be a disaster as well for Central American countries. What we're going to show here is, uh, during this panel, is information and it's a, a, a presentation of one of the most egregious cases, uh, and one of the most egregious examples of how CAFTA has impacted uh, people in Central America, and in particular the people, the people of El Salvador, that have to withstand now an egregious demand of a ruthless corporation to their country in nowhere else but very close here at the World Bank. Before continuing with the case of El Salvador and then on with La Roya in Peru, we will show a video that we prepared with our partners, uh, with many of our partners all across the hemisphere, from Canada to Argentina, on how the investment rules within free trade agreements Uh, yes, it's a very impacting, isn't it, to realize how investors, uh, big corporations, have managed to grab such in, such sweeping rights over the over the public domain. In the con today, it is becoming ever even increasingly worrying because, in the context of high global prices for natural resources, developing country governments seeking to increase the benefits of those resources for the wrong people are finding themselves increasingly at odds with transnational corporations. Um, today in Latin America this is especially worrying. We have found, we have made a study of all the cases that are ongoing at the ICSID, the International Center for, for the Settlement of Disputes at the World Bank, and we have found that there are increasingly, there are increasing cases in Latin America. There are at least 43 cases of extractive industries, that is from oil, gas, mining, that are being uh, treated under this center of disputes at the World Bank. Uh, one of the cases is, as we mentioned, El Salvador's case, the Pacific Rim case. Uh, we have, for this workshop, it's been a technological fit that we're doing, really, to bring people uh, from, all from La Roya, from El Salvador, so we're going to try to Skype in uh, a colleague from La Mesa Nacional Frente a la Minería Metálica en El Salvador, that is the, the round table against metallic mining in El Salvador, which is a very, very successful uh, group of people, of communities, of religious groups, of NGOs, that managed uh, some, a few years ago to halt the mining of gold in their country. <coughs> The mining of gold, as you may know, is highly, highly polluting. You will see that also in another short video. Uh, it pollutes the water with gold, with cyanide. Uh, and El Salvador is perhaps, the, it is the country most vulnerable to water depletion in the whole of Central America. So the people of El Salvador, uh, with, uh, with their struggle, managed to have their country uh, stop the mining of gold, and in turn, the small Canadian company Pacific Rim sued El Salvador, as it was mentioned there, at an international tribunal for at least $77 million. And we're going to try to Skype in Rodolfo Calles, who's the coordinator of this network of organizations in El Salvador. I'm afraid we might not have very good sound. If that is the case, he will give us just a salute, and I will try to continue spending a little bit the case. So. ¿Quieres empezar? No, no vemos tu cara todavía. Es que tengo problemas con el sonido y quería usar el micrófono únicamente. 
Ah, bueno, se oye mejor, se está viendo mejor. Entonces, adelante, Rodolfo. Bueno, yo sí, lo que pasa es que se el micrófono solo de la cámara. No sé si así se escucha mejor. Sí, te escucho mejor. Adelante, Rodolfo. Bueno, en primer lugar, quizás saludar y agradecerles por la oportunidad que nos da a mantener la enfermería de participación en este país. He wants to say hello to everyone and give the thanks from the all of the people at the round table against metallic mining for allowing us this space. He wants also to say that he the sound is much better without him showing his face. I don't know why, but then we will have to miss him. Okay, continue Rodolfo. <laughs> I want to share with you the experience of struggle and work from La Mesa, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it in Spanish from now on, La Mesa Nacional Frente a la Minería Metálica en El Salvador. First I want to share the context of the struggle of mining in the country. At the end of the last century, the spike of the prices of gold brought uh, a lot of Canadian, U.S., British, and Spanish mining companies to our region. En El Salvador, la actual ley de minería aprobada en 1995 permitió la llegada de empresas como Pacific Rim, Martinique Mineral, Mineral Marazán, entre otras compañías constructivas que entre 1998 y 2003, estas obtuvieron en total 29 licencias de exploración otorgadas por el Ministerio de Economía. From 1995 onwards, uh, the mining law in El Salvador allowed for companies like Pacific Rim and others to get between in between 1998 and 20, 2003 29 license, licenses of exploration for mining for mining. See? <laughs> In 2005, Pacific Rim presented its environmental impact study for the El Dorado project in the locality of Cabañas in El Salvador. And it, uh, it, 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 it asked for a permit for the, ex, for the exploitation of such a project. But the Minister of the Environment and Natural Resources denied this permit because the company didn't uh, comply with the requisites, uh, the necessary requisites. This was thanks to the arguments presented by this round table of organizations about the social, economic, and environmental impacts that this would have. To, to bypass the resistance, these companies buy, they buy corrupt uh, ministers uh, at different government levels, religious leaders, social leaders, and finally with money for projects, for so-called projects for the communities. This provokes division among communities, 
between those who are for and those who are against the entrance of these mining projects to their environment. La violencia entre años y la pobreza y vida entre ellas en la defensa ambientalista, Marcela Rivera, Daniela Rivera y Laura Sergio, se debe a la presencia de empresas como Pacific Green, se debe a continuar en ciudades de sentencia de conflicto sexo, con pasado sin ser de abril del presidente. This has provoked such violence that six people have been murdered in the locality of Cabañas, three of them environmentalists. This is given the presence of the company Pacific Rim in the area, and the last killing was on the last 15th of April. See? In March 2009, President Funes ratified the decision of the previous government of not allowing any mining project, any gold mining project in the country. Es así como Pacific Green cumple entonces la amenaza de demandar al Estado salvadoreño en el Centro Internacional de Arreglo de Diferencia sobre Inversión Social. It is when Pacific Green complied with its threat, it carried on its threat that it would sue El Salvador at the ICSI, at the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes at the World Bank. Sued for at least $77 million. Another company, another U.S. company followed suit, suing El Salvador for $100 million because El Salvador revoked its uh, exploitation, its mining, pro its mining permit <coughs> in the locality of La Unión. <laughs> This suit is carried on under the rules of CAFTA, the Central American and U.S. Free Trade Ag Agreement, in which there is a clause about indirect expropriation that was explained in the video. Uh, given this situation and this reality, the state, the government, must reivindicate its sovereign rights and its capacity to act on behalf of the people of El Salvador and against toxic and destructive projects. So it must be shown that Pacific Rim is a victimizer that is suing the victims. And it should be the other way around. It should be the government of El Salvador who should sue Pacific Rim for all the harm it has already produced and all the violence it has inflicted. Together with this work against the suits, we must work to revise, reform, and bring back the rules of free, free trade agreements like CAFTA, and to uh, revise also the free trade agreement that El Salvador is negotiating with countries like Canada. Uh, it's very advanced. The negotiations are in, are in a very advanced state already. To pressure the Salvadoran government to pass on a mining law that prohibits in a definite manner the uh, operation of metallic mining in El Salvador. Well, gracias Rodolfo, uh, he asked if he, anybody has any question. Uh, we will send, we will put questions at the end and we will try to respond. But, well, since this is bad, so we ask for a question. <coughs> Sí, te podemos llamar de regreso cuando haya preguntas, cuando esté la sesión de preguntas, si hay preguntas para ti, Rodolfo. Bueno, muchas gracias, Rodolfo. Hasta luego.